if you remember the scenic cruiser bus, we went to rescue it. It had been derelict, sitting in a lot, wasn't running, wasn't drivable. We went there and we got it running, driving, ready to bring it home. We took it to a tire shop, get new tires on it. They stripped out a whole bunch of the wheel studs and lug nuts and over torqued everything. And they didn't even tell us. Several of them were just finger loose. That's how stripped they were. And we were getting ready to drive it like that. Um, we made an agreement with the tire shop. They went ahead and settled and, and they paid for all new. We have 60 new wheel studs and 100 new lug nuts to go on it. Um, and they're even gonna pay for the labor for us to go there and swap everything out. So we're gonna go to the Scenic Cruiser bus, get that fixed up. We know it has some leaky wheel seals. We're gonna take care of that all at the same time. Uh, put all new seals and we had a leveling valve we're gonna work on and then just kind of go through it and get it ready for the trip home, uh, hopefully from St. Louis area uh, back to Tennessee. We have the truck all loaded up full of tools and ready to go. So we took this little Scenic Cruiser toy with us as a good luck charm, uh, heading, heading to St. Louis. Uh, it's about uh, not quite 400 mile trip here. I did notice tons of cotton fields in Tennessee. I had no idea that we had that much cotton growing here in Tennessee. I looked it up and it's the third largest cash crop in the state. That was just surprising to me. Uh, they, were, they were everywhere and it's, they don't really grow that in the area by us in Tennessee. So I was just surprised to see that much. But as we're heading into St. Louis, um, it's a pretty good travel drive. It's mostly interstate the whole way. Um, pretty quiet, not a lot of traffic. Nobody really comes that way until we get too close to the city. We stopped at Chick-fil-A, I like this bug. It looks like it identifies as a Detroit diesel with the oil leaking out of the back. made it here to the bus so we're gonna start working on the wheel studs this morning getting those replaced um, after we do that then we're gonna go through the engine again and double check it make sure there's no stuck injectors bar it over a couple times and then check the rack for full movement on it and then if it's good we'll go ahead and fire it up and then we got some leveling valves to replace we're gonna do a little bit of work on the brakes we got some wheel seals to replace while we have the hubs off uh, I'm gonna charge the batteries got some diesel to add to it here too Uh, won't be long. Hopefully, we'll have this thing on the road. That truck is shot clean over there. Bleeding <laughs> off. Sucking in their air. Cage this brake so we get this drum off here. Pull the rubber cap out of the back. There's a caging bolt in the middle of the thing there that goes in there. and It's got a little hook on the end of it and it goes in and it hooks. And when you tighten down the screw, you can press the spring back on the spring brakes. a little hook on it so that drops down in the middle mm -hmm. and then you'll need that nut and washer to go back on it go straight down in the middle and you'll feel it hook and you gotta twist it So I can't pull it out? Yep. You can very easily drop this in there. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't think it can go in it all the way. Probably get a ratcheting wrench to tighten it. Jonathan brought most of his Tecton, what was Tecton tool sets. More cowbell. <laughs> I think you gotta back the brakes off. Cause I saw the hub move. Okay. Right? Oh, Look good? I don't see any chew up on it. It'll get us home though, right? Yeah. <laughs> Keep it out of the dirt, we'll be in good shape. Oh man, yeah, it was just a little weird. Near there. mint. <laughs> There's actually a gasket that goes behind that, but somebody just put Permatex, a really thin Permatex, and it looks like that's where it was leaking. So we're gonna put a new gasket on it and a new seal, and we should be good to go. Well, we got the brake shoes all cleaned up real good and then the drum cleaned out, ready to go there. Well, we got into the next hub and the brake spring was all destroyed in there. And then the rollers, one of the rollers was missing, so that brake was completely inoperable. Um, we're going to have to find a new spring and a new roller to get that brake working again. Oh, grease with a little bit of water. Hopefully the grease protected it. That is nasty looking. Chiseled the crap out of that nut, too. That's not a good sign. Is it hand loose? Maybe. Hopefully, it doesn't fit on You might have to grind it down to get that yeah. off. Oh, yeah. Stop moving your fingers. <laughs> so the preload on the outer one. <laughs> There's too many chisel marks on that nut to get the socket to fit on it. It's too chewed up. So should be able to do it too. <laughs> Starting to smell bad. Jiggle the hub, it'll pop right out. That's probably good. Is it big deep pitted or no?
557S. Luckily, George found this truck supply company place here in St. Louis. Uh, we went in and they actually had the brake spring that we needed, the new spring and the roller so we can get the brake working again. That was kind of a Hail Mary. There's the new brake roller and the new brake spring on there. Okay, slack adjuster is greased. The S-cam bushing is greased there. This S-cam bushing is greased. pins on the brakes are greased so we are good to go there's a rusty wheel bearing it sounds terrible and it looks terrible so we're replacing these we're paying to have them overnighted to us come from our buddy Luke at US Coach um, they're, yeah, they're just, they're horrible. The race looks the same. Let's see how pitted they are. So the leveling valve is just electrical taped together there, the arm on it. And then the bottom was taped as well, but it was leaking massive amounts of air. But, uh, they brought a new one with us. Those fittings will have to come out and go on the other one probably because that's a different size fitting. up the lip. How tight they had it. This thing's so beat up with the chisel that I can't even get a socket on it. Same as the other side. I don't want to do, take a grinder to it right now and introduce all those metal shavings towards the bearings. Uh, so we'll take it off with a crescent wrench, but it's kind of ridiculous. Nice brakes on here still though. Nice thick linings. Uh, but we gotta unfortunately replace these wheel studs. Let's see how they strip them out. So that seal was just starting to leak. Not, not too badly. Uh, there is no brake springs. As soon as I took the drum off it fell down I didn't realize it. Both springs have, they had them on backwards probably. And they wore through. I see little shiny lines on there where they were rubbing. That's when you put them on backwards. There's, there's a curve to it, and the curve goes around the hub on the fronts. Not like the, the rears, there's a curve that goes around the S cam. And people are used to the curve that goes around an S cam on a lot of vehicles, but not these GM buses. Uh, some NCIs are like that too. But uh, yeah, they somebody put the springs on wrong, so they're gone. Luckily, they didn't wedge in there or cause any problems. Slight problem there. I did this earlier and it kind of worked. Okay, they took the one part out. Yeah. We had to knock off a little speedy sleeve that was on the wiper there. The wiper's in good shape, I'm not sure why they even used it, but our, our, our new seals would not fit on there with the speedy sleeve. We need an oversized seal for that. He's knocking the one off on the other side right now. Speedy sleeve was seriously worn, but the wiper looks really good in there. Just got grease on it right now. Ooh. George checking the oil bath air filters, and that one's definitely got water in it because it's way over.
full and as soon as he opened it, it spewed everywhere. <laughs> I didn't have the camera ready in time. <laughs> and I was hot enough. <laughs> Our belts are gonna be lubricated now, we're good. <laughs> we're good on that Yeah, one. that one's good, that's the oil on the right level. Usually when they're over full, they show you a sign that they've been leaking. That one's good. Good? Yep. And then the wire mess again. That one's good, I can see the level. Can you? Yep, I can see the holes in there. Okay. Hang on a second. That top was punched on there, right? Yeah, I okay. just took it off. Okay, all right. I thought the same thing. It doesn't really have a whole lot of green in it. Okay, we're gonna bar it over. Two full revolutions. We can judge by the, the break in the pulley there. <laughs> this will let us know if we got any stuck injectors. Oh, it might be in gear. Um, let's go make sure it's in neutral. <laughs> You can't use your impact. No. <laughs> I, don't, I think the... You have an adapter for the bigger bar? No. I, my Tecton set, I think, has a... Uh, breaker bar that's on. <laughs> just the compression. When it gets mm -hmm. tight, just wait a second. It'll bleed off. Technically one revolution is enough, but I like to do it twice, so that all the injectors fire twice. Pretty sure that's more than two. Definitely more than two. Alright, does the rack still move, George? Yep. I mean, yep. No, the none of our nothing well, stuck. Try moving the racks. Oh, gotcha. See the actual nothing stuck down. Yeah, it moves freely. Yeah, none of the nothing injectors. Was, yeah, yeah, but it could have been one on the other side that was stuck. Oh, gotcha. and then the rack would still be seized. But yeah, we're still good. Okay, we can put the valve cover back on. Yeah. I got a little confused. Okay. Yep, I can feel it running here. Say okay, fuel pump on. Clear.
So we're making a new height rod for the leveling valve here. And we just got these little, I don't know if that's considered a heim joint because this doesn't move. So whatever it is, it's like a heim joint, but it doesn't need to move. And then threaded rod that's gonna go between there. We'll put a jam nut on there. And then, uh, yeah, we'll have a new, a new height control valve. Well, luckily that same truck supply place, they had the brake springs we need for the front. Their computer didn't say they had them. The guy went and looked and came out with them. He'd never even seen that kind before. We got real lucky. So brand new brake springs on there. And if you take the rollers out, it's much easier to get those springs on. Now we're gonna put the rollers back in and you wanna do it without smashing your fingers. So one guy with a pry bar lifting them up, one guy with a pair of Cobras or something just to stick them in there. Yeah. Okay, let it go up. Pushed it in, good. Do not put your fingers anywhere near this thing. <laughs> Shoot, go ahead and start coming down a little bit. Oh, yeah, sorry, bud. It's all right. <clears throat> okay. There. there it goes. Perfect. These brake springs on the front, it's very important that they curve around the hub. You put this on backwards, this part curves and touches the hub, rubs on the hub, the hub wears through it and then the spring breaks. The rear springs, are more in the middle and they have a curve that goes around the S cam, but this S cam is recessed in between the two brake springs. So, very important, room for the hub. Changing wheel studs is something Jonathan's never ever gonna wanna do again after this job. <laughs> it's just a pain in the butt to pull all these hubs and replace all these studs. George's mom sent some homemade baklava for us out here. Bonus. Jack sunk just a hair overnight, but you're getting it. This old house electrical wiring crap it's in the way of getting caught in a wheel and stuff so we're gonna pack it all out of there spin the wheel parking brake is on good Is that lug nut screwing you? Slack adjuster was just very out of adjustment on this, so we were able to get that parking brake to work again. Move your stool. Yeah. <laughs> I 
it's good. Yeah, it looks really good. Probably the best one out here. Yeah. So we had to go get these little compression fittings. If you take this end off here and pull that little nipple out of it, that's what goes into uh, these valves here. And then now we can take these old ones, that, these are different size, that's pipe thread. So we can go pipe thread to what we just did there. So, and these are 3 8 So we can adapt it to what's on the bus. It's supposed to be quarter inch. Somebody's changed it to 3 8 at some point. It's been using right by the seat there as a litter box. All kinds of cat shit. We're gonna clean that up. George brought a pooper scooper. That's disgusting. What you got there, George? We're gonna call it cat shit. <laughs> I think it's cat. I think it's cat. Could be could be raccoon. Raccoon. Possum. <laughs> George is a true friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not really I, it's not my shit. <laughs> right behind the driver's seat was the was the spot. Yeah. <laughs> that was the spot. Was that intentional? Was that intentional? Okay. Threw the battery charger on it. It's, it's getting a fuel starvation problem and uh, the batteries are really weak too, so I didn't want to run.
It should be good. They only had like one or two rivets still holding on the front. They're just the wind was going to catch them and rip them off. So we're going to take them off, remove them. They were just going to fly off the bus. So got to get them off. Take exit 12A to merge onto I-270 South toward Memphis. Well, the bus really handed beautifully. A uh, little bit of play in the wheel. Uh, not, not too bad, though, uh, considering uh, it, it really did great. We made it to our first stop here. Okay, George, you were leading the bus. It was cuss word terrifying, effing terrifying. <laughs> 
traffic, six lanes. Friday night, coming out of St. Louis, six o'clock. <laughs> yeah, all six lanes, merging, people <laughs> zooming, trying not to let anyone between the bus and the truck, trying to stay to where we don't have a mandatory exit. <laughs> flashers on trying to wave when we can get in the right lane and <laughs> flash how fast we're going <laughs> i'm a i'm i'm a nervous wreck for sure. <laughs> for sure absolutely and then i mean i can't i couldn't use the phone i couldn't take my i'm both mirrors and they called jonathan get in the left lane and all signal and it was chaos <laughs> chaos scott's cool jonathan acts like no big deal <laughs> I'm a little elevated. <laughs> I'm a little more than elevated. I'm gonna need a little time. <laughs> I am, but safe. Everybody yeah, the bus safe. the bus performed great. We're an hour hour into the trip, and uh, it did great. We just having some problems with the headlights, so we're not gonna drive anymore at night. Well, it was really freaky sleeping in the bus last night. I put an air mattress in there and slept. And I didn't know what kind of critters were going to get me. Mice or rats or cats or spiders. There's spider webs everywhere. I, was, I don't like spiders. Uh, but it was nice and bright, almost too bright to, to sleep anyways in the parking lot. Of the Self, do not park this bus in gear. Leave it in gear when you shut it off because when you start it up the next morning, it's got an air assist clutch on it and you have to hold that clutch down until it builds air and it is very hard to hold it down without the air assist. I had to wait a good three or four minutes holding this clutch with both feet down until I could get it out of the clutch to engage, to disengage enough to pull it out of gear um, without the bus moving. It was, that was not fun. She just fired up. The suspension stayed up all night long. This left side came down a tiny, tiny bit. Just fired right up, popped right off. We stayed at a grocery store called Schnucks. Here, uh, Fe Festus, Missouri, I believe is the name of the town.
73. I didn't need to be going that fast.
This is a piece of iconic American transportation history here, this GM Scenic Cruiser, 1955. Uh, it made it here to our place in Tennessee. Uh, almost 400 miles that we did. Um, mechanically, the bus was flawless. Uh, I can't complain about anything. Um, I didn't really have to break <laughs> on the interstate. There was no traffic. We planned it. Uh, even when we came out of St. Louis that night, we were going slow enough. We never had to break at all. Uh, but that was a little hair raising on a Friday night. Uh, people very aggressive. Uh, the only issue that we had was when we got into Tennessee, there was a, uh, Um, the only issue that I had is we hit a bridge transition that was very bad. Uh, it went down and up right after the bridge, a, a sharp one, and the bus really bounced. This door latch over there came over center, and this door popped open. Now, you think that going, you know, 65 miles an hour, the door couldn't go very far because of the wind, but it opened about this far, uh, and it took all of my strength that I had to push that handle up there that moves to close the door back. And when that happened, it blew that window out up there. That window is not flat glass. That's probably very expensive to replace. Jonathan saw it, he was following me. He saw it fly out. It, luckily it landed on the shoulder of the road and exploded into a million pieces. Didn't hit anybody or anything. We had the um, ratchet strap across there to help hold all that stuff in. Um, but that just that big, jolt from the thing and then the blast of air from the door coming open i think it was a combination that kind of did it in uh finding gears in it are kind of difficult with that shifter because of how it's mounted in there i mean to get into like first gear you're actually hitting the steering wheel with it here and the whole wall that it's attached to moves while you're in the whole unit moves so literally when you're driving it you got to get your elbow up in there and, and pull it back for anything in the reverse gears because you can't literally you can't just pull your hand back far enough to it um because by as much movement as there is on everything look at that it's just you lose you lose so much so it's 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 very very difficult so the good news is once you're on the interstate you don't have to shift anymore um but they have this whole linkage that rod that big rod right there that's the transmission it just hanging out in nowhere giant rod that goes all the way through the middle of the bus it was a terrible way to do it whoever converted it um ideally an automatic transmission this bus would be great but uh hey it got us here uh no complaints mechanically um needs some work electrically <laughs> needs some work everything um but it's been saved you know it, it's not at risk to go to the scrapper now um it is still a running and driving bus so it has that going for itself but it's rough. We're gonna announce what our plans are with it in the future later for you. Um, but for now, making it, I'm gonna try to get, locate the windows, all the windows to get the windows back in it and get things sealed up to keep the water out of it here. Um, it'd be nice if I could put it under covered storage here somewhere on the property. I think that would be a, to help preserve it at least in the condition that's in. It's never gonna be a seated coach again. It's, it's too far for that. It could be a motor home or something else. And like I said, I'll share with you what our plans are for it. Um, as we were pulling out of the lot where we did all that work to it and got it running, a guy came up to us and asked how much to buy it. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh man, it's not for sale. If he would have asked me before we did all that work or a week ago before I went out there again, uh, I definitely would have shot him a decent number where he could have bought it. But, uh, he, he didn't, uh, I, I gave him my, it's not for sale price and he wasn't interested in that. So, but, uh, it's a good bus and, uh, I'm, I'm happy that it made it home safely. Ellie, are you gonna clean out the bus? Are you gonna clean it? It's it's even too dirty for that. <laughs> From a mile away, you can hear them play as they climb that hill with ease. At the 
top of that mountain there's a new life waiting for those who can make the run. They can make it to the top, Scott will put them in the shop till their new life has begun. Bus Grease Mountain, where the buses come to run. Bus Grease Mountain, we're gonna get that big job done. 